I had a Bible in my hand since I was about five years old. I came from a Jehovah Witness background, and um, my parents were divorced uh, at an early age, and uh, it seemed all my desires, I was told, uh, I'm going to die for, if I do this, I'm going to die, and um, uh, then there was some, some abuse that happened from an elder in the church, and um, I started smoking, and... Uh, then shunning happened, and I thought, well, if I'm going to die for this, I'm, I might as well do everything, um, which created much baggage and trouble. So I ran away, I hit the streets, I drank, I smoked, uh, crank became my, my favorite drug. I, I dropped out of high school uh, so I could make money off the adults because there wasn't very much profit in school. And um, so... I continued in that until I was, I got pregnant and married and I cleaned up for a while. I got my, uh, I graduated from high school. My baby was there screaming his lungs out and um, had a marriage for a while. And it was kind of a rough marriage. And that fell apart and then I hit the streets again and I started shooting up when I was 19 years old. And that went on for quite a while. And then I, uh, I decided to go play in the playground, the Gypsy Jokers. And um, I met my first one percenter. I, I ran with him. Uh, I was going over to you know get dope. And he uh, had just been beaten really badly with a wrench. So I helped, helped he, with his wounds and stuff. And I, I became his, uh, his driver and we made big deals uh, and uh, like $9,000 driving deals and things like that. Well, eventually he asked me to hide him in another town and I did that. I didn't know what he had done. He had stole one of those duffel bags. So um, when they wanted to know where he was, I wouldn't say and of course they beat it out of me and took my purse and found him. He was dead in a couple of days. Um, after that, I decided maybe uh, it was uh, not a good place to be, and, and then when I became aware I could find four out of the five most wanted lists in the newspaper, I thought, you know, I think I better uh, do something different with my life here. So I cried back out to God, and um, I always, I was one of those people that you heard yesterday that no matter how high they were, I was talking about God. I, I was one of those people. So I read my Bible a lot, and when I became in fear, I, I always went to my Bible. Um, but still, I didn't know Jesus. Um, he's been so good to me. Um, so I sobered up, and things were good for a while, and I was married and happy, and, and that turned bad again. I uh, didn't have God in my life, uh, but I had a happy marriage for a while, and then that turned bad also, and I went back to using and relapsing and street life again. Um, got into cooking, cooking drugs and moving glassware and things like that. And I had rules that I thought must be obeyed, and at the end of that, I ended up uh, destroying that lab and making everybody quite mad. Um, so then uh, my son fell into prison. He's done 16 years now. If you could pray for him, I'd appreciate that. Um, he'll be home in four years. And then I got involved with another bad boyfriend. Uh, he was really crazy. My brain kept thinking, oh, I, if I just love him, he could, I could fix him. And, uh, and I was learning some diet stuff and studying. And the Holy Spirit actually tried to talk to me then, saying he's crazy. I argued. I said, no, I can fix him. Uh, he needs love. Good food, that'll fix him. He's crazy, the Holy Spirit says. I didn't listen. I just, the third time, after the third time, when I argued with the Holy Spirit, I didn't hear it anymore. So I stayed with him. It escalated in about six months to a torturous situation where he, he heard voices in his head saying, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I said, no, that I'm not doing what he was saying. And he proceeded to take pliers and, and uh, to my hands and things to make me confess. I didn't 
confess what he wanted to hear. The thought crossed my mind. If I say what he wants to hear, this will stop, but then I'll be a liar. So I stuck to it. And I was praying all along. I prayed, and, and he knew I was praying. And he, he'd, he'd say, Here, prayer won't save you now. But I kept praying, and it did save me now. Because God always opens a window for you. Amen. And he opened that window for me. And, and I escaped. And um, so after that, that was a real turning point. I'm done. I'm, I've decided I'm done. And God saved me, and he rescued me. And then um, I started staying with Jehovah's Witnesses again because I really believed they had the truth. And I would study with them, and they would come, and I couldn't get victory over a couple of things. And they had their suggestions. And finally, after a Bible study, I just, I, I cried. I said, God, I know these are your people, but God, send me your new people. I know there's more people than just them. Send me your new people. And one by one, in different aspects of my life, Seventh-day Adventist people came into my life. And before that, I um, had prayed the prayer, God, um, please give me so much work that I can't possibly find trouble again. And he did. He blessed me. I still have work up to here. Um, so one by one, Seventh-day Adventists came into my life. One of them was a nanny of a place that I clean. I clean homes for a living, have my own cleaning business. Uh, another, I was cleaning, uh, they were missionaries. And then I went to a fair, a health uh, fair, a health booth at the fair. The health message is what reached me. And I came up to a booth and they had all the, the test tubes of this, what's in this food and the salt and the oil and things like that. And uh, a clipboard, do you need help with anything? And I ch had checked uh, smoking. I could not get victory over smoking, and I was having a little bit of alcohol issues still, but smoking was the one. And uh, so that turned into a smoke cessation class, and uh, when I showed up to this class, I, the, the man presenting the, the brother, I looked at him, and there was this glow about him that I've never seen before, and I was like, I don't know what that dude's on, but I want that. I want to be high like him because he looks so happy and whatever he's on, I have to know. Well, of course we all know that was Jesus. It was Jesus. And it turned into a Bible study. And you know, when our church does these things, they have prayer teams and that makes all the difference in the world. And um, so that led to my baptism. Now, the, the cigarette thing I had uh, with our church, we had set up a group where there were sponsors. Um, I actually had to go through two of these classes to get the victory. The first class turned into the Bible study, which led to my conversion. But the next class, um, they set up sponsors where they call you. She found out I wouldn't call you. I wouldn't call her. She's like, how come you don't call me when you're going to smoke a cigarette? I'm like, I don't call people. <laughs> and, so she started calling me at four in the morning, every couple hours when, when I confessed when I would smoke. I got to the point where I was like, oh, this woman, I'm so annoyed with her. And I'm working, and I'm, I'm like, I'm working at this, in this house, and like, I can't wait to get out of this house. I'm just gonna go smoke that cigarette. And I'm so mad, so angry, so frustrated. I don't want any more. I prayed for years, please God, help me, please God. Give me the strength to quit. Every which way I thought to pray. And finally, and she called me. The phone rang. I was angry. I was rude to her. And she's all, she's so sweet. Oh, just let me pray over you. She prays over me. And I go back to work. And I just, I just cried out. I'm like, God, Jehovah, Jesus, Holy Spirit, whatever your name is, I don't even know. And I fell on my face and I cried, I can't do this. I can't do this. You have to do it for me. And that is when the presence of God came into where I was working. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. It became so real. It was so real. It was like this hug. That, and I was having a nervous breakdown in this person's shower that I'm cleaning. And it, it was like, it's going to be all right somehow. And it just, this, I'm going to be all right. And, a miracle happened. He took my cravings away. 
I did not quit smoking cigarettes. I got a miracle from God. He took my cravings away. Now, I, that made the war. There was no more war. It, it, it just changed. It, it became so real for me. I wept for two weeks. I would tell people, don't mind me. You know, they'd be talking to me. I'd just be crying. The, my body went through withdrawals, but I was happy. And um, a sweet sister said, oh, don't worry, honey. That's just the Holy Spirit working in you, uh, which was a relief to know because I'm like, what's going on? I can't control this. So I just wept for, it was probably two weeks. Um, so then I, um, I was baptized. And I had the most beautiful baptism. And... It was very special with, with food and um, potluck. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So I've spent some time healing. I'm learning everything I can. I'm so happy and grateful. And, and I said one day, um, God, you've done so much for me. What can I do for you? And and then it was about a week or so went by. My, my sister was sitting over there. I always admired her boots. I have a thing for boots. And um, she just walks by me one day and says, do you want to join the jail ministry? I'm like, okay. And I walk away going, oh, you're really funny, God. After all those years of running from the cops, now I have to go in there and be nice to him? Are you kidding me? <laughs> But it's been such a blessing, and, um, and it is so true. When I went in there, and I realized it's just a, all these broken children. I'm, I'm like, my sisters, you're my sisters. And it brought so much healing to have value of the things that I went through to connect with these young women and, and older ones. We're all, there, there are brothers and sisters in there and it is just so true that God can make good of all when you love him and I this ministry is such a blessing to me um, I have had to learn how to obey rules and things like that and our chaplain I did it kind of the hard way <laughs> it's like he, he showed me once and says here you go you're on your own I'm like what <laughs> But um, we're coming along. Thank you.